Right. Yay. Okay. Okay. Three minutes. Yeah, just a few minutes. How many times have you <coughs> seen Noah's art, Deb and Bonnie? You guys went a couple times, right? Or just once? What? How many times have you been to Noah's Ark? Oh, this was our first time. Oh, I thought you had been. Yeah, there. and then we went to the Creation Museum, which was like, I that was amazing. Yeah, that, I mean that's like you have to go to that for sure. That was really favorite. yes, <clears throat> the Creation <throat> Museum, and then we went to the Ark the next day. But the Creation Museum was like a, just amazing, and we got to hear this uh, guy speak named Ken Ham. And he just did this presentation for about an hour or 45 mm -hmm. minutes or something at the Creation Museum. And it was so just Ken was so actually well. there? Ken was there? Oh, yeah. you know him? Well, yeah, he was there. Right. Right. He writes all kinds of books and stuff. Yeah. And it, yeah. uh, it was just a really good experience. And it compared a lot the creation um, versus, you know, the scientific. Yeah. Um, you know, I, creation of the earth. And yeah. the solar system and it's just the creation version and then they would put it side by side and the creation version and it just answered a lot of questions that would pop up when because I was teaching this kind of you know this you know at a third grade level you know the scientific version and that's what we learned in school you know our textbooks and stuff and I would always have all these questions and with the creation version for me it just made a lot more sense yeah. Yeah. You know, he I mean, did go into all these guys. details. <laughs> yeah. He did his talk on the right. Um, what was it, Bonnie? Um, oh, that we're the running race oh, in the blood. About we're one race. Yeah. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. So you know, good. Because we all come from Adam and Eve, like all of us, and about how dinosaurs coexisted, mm -hmm. you know, with humans and, yeah. um, it it was it was just it was it was the good. biblical the stance on everything versus the science. It was so good, yeah. so good. I I learned so much. Amazing. That you know about the Earth being here six thousand years in the world right. versus billions of years and how they've proven it. And I mean, six thousand years is like nothing, you know. Right. And earth and it's so it's so good, y'all. It's so good. Field trip. Good Field trip. I love it. Yeah, girls trip. Hey, Annie Mae. All right. Marty. That's his name. It's Marty Stanley Sawyer. We call him Stan. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I never <Hey>. knew. <laughs> yes, look at that gray hair. Man, oh. it is such a blessing to see you. What a blessing. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Jimmy. I think you're muted, buddy. I am. I'm chewing. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> All right, guys. We are going to get started. So Sheila's going to pray us in. And then we have... Announcements? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what you have planned for tonight, Lord. I just pray that we would have um, eyes to see and ears to hear and that our hearts would be open to what you have planned and um, that we would be receptive. And I just thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your plans for us. Lord, I thank you that you have it all laid out for us to follow in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So one thing that we want you to know about this training is that we want you guys to jump in. There'll be plenty of times for us to discuss. And so um, keep yourself muted until you're ready to talk. And then you can raise your hand, kind of wave to us. You can just unmute yourself and jump in and um, discuss with us. And so you're invited to do that. We do like for you to um, we used to say for you to keep it on speaker mode, but because we do want this to be a discussion with all of us, um, gallery mode might be the best. And so you can kind of pick and choose the way that you want to. 
but we're super glad that everyone is here with us tonight. And we like to start every single training by setting the sales. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the sales tonight. But um, if you know them, we invite you to do them with us. And if it's your first time, second time, third time hearing them, just kind of jump in. We do do mm -hmm. motions with them because it helps our mind to remember like what they are. And so Sheila, it's your turn. Wow. <laughs> okay. Ready, everybody. Here we go. We surrender to his Holy Spirit. We love God more and we love people more. We pray continuously and we build on God's word and we train to obey it. We focus on the mission as we share the vision. We go out among the lost. We show God's love in words and in action. We invite others to discover what the Bible says. And when someone says yes, we disciple them into a love relationship with God and others. And then we multiply church communities to build and disciple and um, all multiply. And, multiply. And then all together, we stay together and keep each other strong. All right. All right. Look at you. Look at me. Look at Sheila. Hi. <laughs> so the reason we do motions and the reason that we practice putting those sales into motion every single day um, we're going to talk, like I said, we're going to talk more about that today, but it is the foundation of why we do what we do. Um, before we jump into that, speaking of foundation, we are going to jump into God's word together. So if you've got your Bible on your phone or you've got it in front of you, we are going to be looking at a scripture that um, a lot of you are probably very familiar with. It's Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to be reading together verses 18 through 20. And so Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. And we would love for someone who has it in front of them to go ahead and unmute themselves and read it. And we'll give you a minute, Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. I'll read it. Thank you, Anne. Okay. God, we just thank you for this word that we're getting ready to get into and just show us what you would have us to glean from the reading um, and use for you, for your glory. In Jesus name. Amen. And this is the NIV version. All right. It says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey, to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All right. So doing, yeah. So when we're doing um, Discovery Bible Study or... Um, we answer the questions of what is this, what does this passage tell us about God? What does it tell us about people? And for those of us who are, who have been um, making disciples for a while, like why is it that we're going, that we go back to this passage over and over and over again? What does it tell us? What does it teach us? What is it that we need to know and learn from this passage? So we want you guys to jump in, go ahead and unmute yourself and just let us know. What does it teach us? What does it tell us? Well, it tells us, you know, that um, with the same authority as Jesus, I mean, with his same authority, he commands us to go out and um, spread the good news. And we're disciples. And that's what that's what our mission is. Yes. Yes. And what about our relationship with others? with our relationship relationship with people uh teaching others what we have learned um yeah. i think it tells us about god is that he's he's the one with all the authority he's yeah. the god, he's our god he's our creator he's the one that's on the throne and he's teaching us um to go out and to teach others what we have learned Amen. To obey everything that yeah. he's told us to obey and everything he's told us to do. Mm 
times. He's just... I love how he says that he's going to be with us always to the very end of the age. That's our, that's our reward. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have our work cut out for us. We go out where his hands and feet, his, his mouth, you know, and then it's like saying, and then I'm with you. He's not sending us out alone. Amen. 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 Very good. And teaching them to obey, you know, there's this thing like <clears throat> when people hear the word obey, some people are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to hear that obey or to be obedient or I just don't, I don't want to hear that. Or it seems like, you know, pointing fingers or, you know, lashes or whatever, mm -hmm. but really we obey we obey him because we love him, right? We obey him from our love and um, <clears throat> it's out of humility. And so when we're teaching people to obey everything he has commanded, it's not because he's some tyrant, you know, telling us what to do and <clears throat> out of some kind of, I don't know, pointed finger. It's like, if you love him, you're yeah. going to obey him. You it's know? a response. Yeah. It's a response of love. Mm -hmm. And when, and when, you know, and when you finally like surrender to him, he really does work on changing your heart. And, you know, he starts working on that rebelliousness and wanting to be in control. And sometimes you have to pray on that, pray to pray about that on a daily basis about wanting to take charge, you know? But it's like you just, uh, he changes your heart and he softens it. And and after a while, you want to obey him. You want to please him. Yeah. You know, you, because you your love for him grows as your relationship with him grows and blossoms. Yeah. I, I think it's a responsibility. Um, we have a responsibility and... Um, which is so beautiful because God gave us a plan and a purpose to fill that responsibility. And then you get all that many blessings from obeying. Yeah. And so I'm just sort of, it's just so simple at the same time. It's sometimes so scary and so hard to do in this crazy dark world. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. All right, anyone else? And um, for everyone who's just joined, I'm putting it in again. We're discussing Matthew 28, 18 through 20. <clears throat> if you see it twice, it's because um, new people came on after it was put in the first time. So anyone else have anything else about that? No, not anything profound. I just want to say that there's a lot there's that those are three little verses and there's just so much packed into those three verses yeah very good so true yeah I I think that that what I'd love for us to do then is move on here here's the at the core of disciple making um as as we are sharing it with you now and as we are all learning together um is actually doing what it says the obedience factor that's the love language of god um in fact you know, to love god is to obey his commandments john said i mean that was pretty clear right jesus said if you love me you'll obey what i command it's like come on do what i'm telling you to do you know um why would you call me lord lord and not do what i say is how, how jesus said it so okay we're supposed to do it but but how many people um, have, have ever heard of this expression um thank you god's grace i will um, that commitment statement that we make that if you if you've been with us for any length of time you've probably heard us say that by God's grace I will um, that I will commitment is a commitment to say I'm going to do whatever I believe this passage is telling me to do I just want you to think about that it's saying whatever this passage is saying I'm going to do it but we say by God's grace because we know but we can't do it in our own strength. We can only do it by God's grace, by his help. So by God's grace, I will. Now, uh, Stuart, had you raised your hand? You got a you got a comment? 
Yes, only because, I mean, you know what we just got finished watching. Yes. Because of that, I don't know. I I was dealing with a young man that, how can I say it? Well, he's an educated young man, let's say that. He's got a, a biology degree. He's in his 40s, but, you know, I've been trying to get him since, oh, God. For the last two years, but he finally agreed to do a. This is the second time he's agreed to do a twenty four seven challenge with me when we started. Uh, right. Fine, but you know, I'm always running into people who say, "Well, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my purpose is." But you know, I try to take everybody back to this scripture because this is everybody's purpose. Yeah, your gift is something different. Everybody's got different gifts, but this is what we're called as followers of Christ to do. Yeah. So tell everybody, if you don't know what your purpose is, this is it. Now, if you don't know, this is your purpose. This is Good all word. Our Good word, brother. Thank you. Love that, Stuart. Love that. Um, so guys, here's here's what here's what I want to ask is if we take this passage seriously. And Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And a disciple is somebody who is a follower of Christ. It means they're, they're loving like Jesus, living like Jesus, following his example, following his lordship. They are, they are loving God like, like Jesus taught us to love God. And they are loving others like Jesus taught us to love others. They are obeying and following Jesus. Well, he's saying go into all the world and make disciples like that of all people of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything i've commanded you i want you to take everything i've commanded you and i want you to be able to put that out there for them to actually obey it not just to hear it all right so that's what he says now let's try it if you were to take that seriously what would your by god's grace i will statement need to be who in who in the group would have a by God's grace, I will statement based on Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Stuart. My by God's grace statement will be God help me be that example to how to live and love like Christ. Our words are great, but you know, I think the best example we all have found out as we've taken this discipleship journey is our life, you yeah. know, being, them being able to see you and see you react. And to people that don't know you, they see you now. And for some of us, you're more polished than you were when you originally, before you started this journey or before you accepted Christ. I know I am. I'm speaking for me. Right, right. Now you see me and, you know, preferably I'll be, a, my life will be attractive to them and it won't so much what I say but more like what I do I think when we get 19 in this script in this uh chapter 19 is more about us showing them how to love and live like Christ more than it is us telling them yeah yeah that's my statement help me help me walk worthy of your calling for me mm. amen amen who else I kind of want to piggyback on that because um, I want to ditto that. And then also, um, especially when I'm wrong in some way, you know, that um, humility that needs to happen um, to say, I'm sorry, or, you know, will you forgive me kind of thing? Because, uh I can tend to try to fight my way or try to prove my way into why I'm right, you know, but when I'm wrong about something, I want to be easily and quickly convicted and then be able to go back and say, Hey, I am so sorry. Will you forgive me? No matter who that's to. Amen. Amen. Good work. I didn't know. Have you been wrong before, Sheila? I'm, I'm waiting. I'm so <laughs> waiting. Yes, okay. I'll let you know when I'm wrong. 
Yeah. So, um, all right. So I want, I want to ask you to think, think that in terms of this for this by God's grace commitment on this passage, if you were to say, I'm going to obey what Jesus said here, what would your by God's grace statement by God's grace? I will. Now, now I want to try this and see if this will make sense to you based on what he said here by God's grace. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him there, right? So he says this, go, right? So by God's grace, I will go and I'll make disciples of people of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything he's commanded. Now, that's that would be obedience to this passage, right? I'm going to go into all the world. I'm going to make disciples of all nations. I'm going to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to, I'm going to teach them to obey everything he's commanded. And so, as Stuart said, we all have different gifts, but we all have the same exact commission, right? That's been given to us all. So somehow, every one of us would need to be able to say, by God's grace, I will. I will do that, right? Now, we're just going to jump in. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. What we're going to do tonight it's, it's going to be a good night for an overview because we have the, the privilege of, of having a couple of folks either coming back after sickness or being here for the first time. So the overview will be extremely helpful. So first of all, just laying the foundation for you, we're going we're gonna to start with this commission and say that what most Christians have experienced in their lives, including pastors like myself, many, many, many pastors will say, I went my entire life, even as a pastor, not really knowing how I could make disciples personally. I knew to invite people to church and, and, and do Bible studies and do other stuff. But in terms of how to disciple someone, I, I didn't know how. And there are many, many, many pastors who would say, I didn't know how to make a disciple. I didn't know how to do that. And so many people as Christ followers, if you are not a missionary, have no idea how can I go into the world to make disciples and how can I teach someone to obey everything he's commanded? I've never been to seminary. So, so many Christians feel like I could never personally step out to fulfill this command. And, and because I don't know how, that's what this course is. How does that make sense to everybody? So this course is how this is how you do it. And the way that you do it begins with the sales for this reason. Let's, let me tell you an, an, an illustration. So I have done some sailing. I've done sailing on catamarans and I've done sailing on, on bigger uh, cabin boats. I've, I've, I've been on a boat that sailed from Grand Bahama Island back to uh, the United States. And, and in the process of that, um, our job on that boat was to hoist up sails and set those sails, and then the wind took us from Grand Bahama Island to we ultimately landed in Hilton Head, right? So, so we we went from Grand Bahama to Hilton Head, not at all under our own power, and we could make take no credit for you know what I'm saying for for getting us there. It was the power of the wind that got us there. But if we had not set the sails, we would have sat in Grand Bahama Island in that port and never moved an inch. Does that make sense to everybody? We would not have gone anywhere if we didn't set the sails. So somebody had said, all authority is given to him, so it's him. He's the one who does it. And what we all know is, is God, it's his power, it's his work. It's only by his grace that we do it. But we have a responsibility to set the sails so that when he does move, we are moved by him. And, and setting the sails are acts of simple obedience to the basic core commands of God. So let's just try this, okay? Uh, let's just try and say, say that the basics of a disciple of Jesus Christ, the number one thing that Jesus taught us was surrender, right? But now if everybody knows that's the first step one for me in a relationship with God is to repent of my sin and to surrender myself to him and his will. Everybody agree with that? And so you can see why 
we start with surrender. Now, here's the thing. If we don't start with surrender, then nothing else matters because I'm not going to be doing, I'm not going to be making disciples. And if I made a disciple, I'd make a bad one. If I'm not surrendering to his Holy Spirit, everybody agree? I got to do that. But Jesus also said regarding making disciples in the book of, of, of Luke chapter nine, verses 23 through 25, we read recently even, he said this, if anyone wants to be my disciple, they need to deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. So that means this surrender to his Holy Spirit, the surrender to his will over my will is not something I do once. It's something that I do every day. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So you can see why that's absolutely crucial. Here's what we're going to be asking you to do. We're going to ask you, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it 10 times here, and I'm going to ask everybody to join me. And it sounds silly, but this is going to help you remember because we're going to ask you to do it yourself every single day. I'm going to ask you if you're on a prayer call to actually call out these sales on the prayer call. Just say, hey, let's take a minute and just go through it. Do it during the praise time. Do it at the end of the time before everybody goes out. But just when you're on an encouragement call or a discipleship call, I want you to, to remind people of these sales. But together, let's do it. We lift our hands and we just say, every day I'm going to surrender to His Holy Spirit. Would everybody agree that that would be the important foundation for us to lay, to be used by God, right? Amen. Now, why do y'all think, tell me why the next thing would say we would say is, I want to love God more. And I and y'all, you can, I will do it sometimes. I'll just say, I want to love God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. I want to love my neighbor as myself, right? And so why would I want to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, love my neighbor as myself as the second sale? Why would that be important to you? Go ahead. What we say in Heather? That's the basis of it all. First commandment right there. Love God, love others. That's it. And Jesus said that all the law and the commandments hang on those, those two commandments. Everybody, everybody agree? So it all comes down to that. So everybody get this. If I'm not loving God and I'm not loving people, what we're what we're told in, in the book of 1 Corinthians is I'm just like a, a, a loud, noisy gong making a whole bunch of noise. I can speak in the tongues of men and angels, but if I don't have love, I'm just making noise. I can have the gift of prophecy and fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, but if I don't have, have love, then I am nothing, right? right? So, so everybody get the picture. You see why we want to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, love our neighbor as ourself. And you might do that as love God more, love people more. You might do it like me and go love God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength and love my neighbor as myself, right? All right. So will y'all cross your hands and do it? You ready? want to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, love my neighbor as myself. How often? Every single day. I want to surrender to his Holy Spirit. Y'all doing with me. I want to surrender to his Holy Spirit. I want to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want to love my neighbor as myself on an everyday basis, right? And then I want to pray continually without ceasing. Y'all remember that that's the command of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, is to pray continually. Y'all, prayer is at the heart of everything, Right? Because that means that's my constant communion with God. That's where I'm constantly listening to him, constantly sharing my heart with him. So who believes that praying without ceasing would be at the heart of God being able to move me through the day? If I only pray in the morning, the rest of the day, I'm not connecting with him. How am I even going to be guided by him, right? But if I'm praying and I'm continually praying, I'm constantly in communion with the Father, he's going to be able to guide me. So I surrender to his Holy Spirit. I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love my neighbor as myself. Every day I seek that, right? I want to pray without ceasing every single day. I want to just be constantly in communion with him, right? And then I want to build on God's word. Build on God's word, right? And y'all remember that building on God's word, as we have, uh, I'm bringing, bringing in Don. Don has joined us. Everybody say it at the same time. Hey, Don, y'all ready? When he gets on, I'll tell you, one, two, three, and you're going to, everybody, hey, Don. If he gets on, he's like, he's taking a minute here. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, he's not able to hook up. When he hooks up, I'm going to say one, two, three, whenever I do that. Y'all can do it. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Hey, Don. Hey, Don. Hey, Don. Hey, we are so glad you're on, man. Welcome home. Welcome home. All right, so guys, we surrender to his Holy Spirit, right? Every single day. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love our neighbor as ourselves, right? We pray without ceasing. We build on God's word. And so you remember Jesus said that if you, if you hear these words of mine and you put them into practice, you're like a wise person who built their house on the rock, right? I want to build on God's word, right? But the only way that you build on God's word is not by just hearing it. It's by doing what? Obeying it. So we train to obey, right? So we build on God's word and we train to obey his word. So again, how is God going to move me if I'm not obedient to his word? If I just hear it, I'm like a person who has his house built on the sand, right? And it's just going to fall. Now, Don, what we're doing is we are going through these sales. And I know it feels silly, but we're asking everybody to do them with this time and time again. So it gets rooted in your heart and mind. We're saying that these are the things that we must do every day so that by his Holy Spirit, he moves us. And, and the first one is we surrender. We surrender to his Holy Spirit. So we're surrendering to his will over our will. Yes, amen. And we're seeking to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love our neighbor as ourselves every single day, right? Every day we're praying without ceasing. Every day we are building on God's word. And we open that up just like a Bible and say we're building on God's word, right? And every day we're training to obey his word. Because if I'm not obeying it and I'm not putting it into practice, it's no good to have it, right? Does everybody see why all those are important? Now, next we go to, we focus on the mission. Now, that focusing on the mission, guys, I want you to think about it. This great commission that we've been given to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. How many people find that you have other goals and other things that end up being prioritized in your day? And sometimes you're not very focused on the mission. Anybody besides me? And so how many people feel like we need a daily reminder to be focused on the mission instead of being focused on whatever else is screaming for my attention that day? Everybody agree? So every day we focus on the mission. Every day we share the vision. Everybody got that? Every day we share the vision. Now, here's why sharing the vision is important. And we've said that to y'all before, but Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And so when you meet Christians, it doesn't mean that, that this whole great commission we've been given, that it's not important for you to have that mission in mind when you're talking to them, because you share with them the mission of making disciples. You get to invite them to be a part because there are too few workers in the harvest field. And so you get to reach out to people who are Christ followers and you share the vision with them. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so you're focused on the mission of making disciples. You're sharing that vision with other people so that they too can go out and make disciples. All right. So here we go. Everybody together. Surrender to his Holy Spirit every day, right? Every day we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. Every single day we pray without ceasing. Every single day we build on God's word. Every single day we train to obey his word. Every single day we're focused on the mission. And every single day we share the vision. And every single day we go out among the lost. We go out among the lost. Y'all, why would that be important? Why is it that we have this every day we're going out among the lost? Why would that be important to have that in our sales? To show God's love. Yeah, and we're going to show God's love in action, and we're going to share God's love with words, but why do I need to be reminded? That is so funny. That cat was giving us just the most your cat just told us all off in one little pose right there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, <moving. laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I got to move. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I, I am taking notes, I promise. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so guys, the reason we need to be reminded to go out among the lost, what's in that great commission that would make you think of that? Well, we have to go. If we don't go out, how are we going to share? 
I mean, yeah. you go out and shit. You know, yes. if you just stay to yourself, and if you know, yes. you, you got to go out whether no matter what kind of personality you have, you know, yes. um, to share. Go and make disciples. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Now, here's the thing, guys. Is how many of us know this? That if I'm not reminded to go out among the lost, I can be surrounded by seas of people and not even recognize that I'm surrounded by lost people. I can be at work. I can be at school. I can be in my home. I can be places and not even be conscious of the lost people around me. One of the reasons for saying we go out among the lost is every day I need to be reminded that I'm going into a sea of lost people. And also, I need to be reminded if I have it, it isolated myself and I'm only surrounding myself by Christians or I'm only surrounding myself by my home and my TV, then I need to be reminded that God's called me to go, right? So to go out among the lost. How often? Every day, right? Every day. So every day we surrender to his Holy Spirit. Come on, guys. Every single day we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves, right? Every single day, we pray without ceasing. Every day, we build on God's word. Every day, we train to obey God's word. Every day, we focus on the mission. And every day, we share the vision. And every day, we go out among the lost. And now, this is how I say it. We show God's love in actions, and we share God's love with words. Our actions show God's love, and our words share God's love. Make sense? So we show God's love in action and we share God's love with words. Now, why do you think that's important? Why are the actions important? Actions speak louder than words. Right? That's what Stuart was saying earlier, wasn't it? Like, it's, I got to show it in my actions. You ever heard somebody say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And that's how Jesus did it. He showed his love in actions and then he shared his love with words. So he's going to be he's going to be touching them and blessing them and healing them and doing things for them. And then he's going to be inviting them to come and follow him. You know what I'm saying? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. All right. Now, here's where we are so far for everybody on this. We're going to go on from here after we've been learning so far to show God's love in action and share God's love with our words. The next thing is we're going to talk about inviting people to discover. And what we're inviting them to discover is God's word. We're inviting them to discover in God's word, his truth in his word. So we're inviting people to, to discover God's word. However that comes out of your mouth is fine, but we're inviting them to discover. That's what we're doing when we share his word out there. But then we ask them, would you like to learn for yourself? And that's what you did when you invited somebody to a high five challenge or to a 24 seven challenge or this week, we encourage you to go out and invite people to a busy life challenge and just say, Hey, would you like to do this for yourself and get into God's word and learn how to get it for yourself? So you're inviting them to discover, right? And when they say yes, that is a person of peace potentially, which means a person who's going to take his word and share it with others. So when somebody says yes to that invitation to discover, we want to disciple them in a relationship with God, right? That's the reason we point that finger up, that relationship with God, the number one, right? And with others, right? So we invite people to discover, right? And when they say yes, we want to disciple them in a love relationship with God and others. And I love the fact that we will say, and you'll hear these sisters say it again and again, you'll hear them say, we disciple them in a love relationship with God and others. It's all about relationships, y'all. We were created for a love relationship with God. And that relationship is what transforms our lives. And then our relationships with others is what he's called us to live out in our faith is our love for others, right? So it's love relationships with God and others. So again, if you're ready, we surrender to his Holy Spirit. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourself, right? And we pray continually every day. We build on God's word every day. We train to obey his word every day. And every day we focus on the mission. And every day we share the vision. Every day we go out among the lost. 
and we show God's love in actions and we share God's love with words. And every day we invite people to discover God's word. And when they say yes, right, we disciple them in a love relationship with God and others, right? So we invite people to discover. Let's do that again. We invite people to discover. And when they say yes, we disciple them in a love relationship with God and others, right? Now, that's beautiful, right? And when you start discipling people in a love relationship with God and others, then what's going to happen is that group of people is going to begin to catch the heart of what you're doing, where you're showing God's love in action and you're sharing God's love with words and you're going to watch new small church communities get formed and go out and repeat the process to go out and share others, right? And so when you see those new groups going out, you're going to be so blessed. But all the time, we stay connected with those who make us strong, right? And that means that we're staying connected like this in coaching. We're staying connected on our discipleship calls with people who are making disciples. And many people will say this is this is one of the most important parts of the whole thing. It's the reason we're told in Hebrews 10, uh, 24 and 25, not to give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, right? We need to encourage one another because we need encouragement to keep up this, this path, right? Okay, now I want to ask for questions. I'm going to ask you questions, I should say, and I want y'all to weigh in, just weigh in real quick, unmute and weigh in. I want to ask you, first of all, why do we surrender to his Holy Spirit? Why is that important? Somebody tell me. Why is that important every day? Well, you have to surrender so you can be obedient. If you don't, you know. Amen. Amen. So it's an everyday surrender because it's an everyday obedience to whatever he's prompting and leading us to. Fantastic. Yeah, it's it's yeah. different than believe just believing. You know, you can believe you can believe, but the surrendering's the important part. Yeah. Yeah. It's his, his will ever my will, right? Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Why is loving God and loving people so important? Who? Weigh in. Because God is love. And if we don't love, we're not surrendering. We're not, right. I mean, we got to love him, to surrender and commit every day, loving him and loving the people that he loves, loving everybody. Yeah. Fantastic. That's it. And so everything he commands boils down to that, right? And so if I'm not loving, I'm I'm off track. So I need to be on track every day, loving, right? Awesome. Okay. So why is it that prioritizing or, or making prayer a continual thing, praying without ceasing? Why? Amen. Stand on that. Say that again. Why is it important to pray without ceasing? Well, I'm, to me, I you know I know prayer is important, of course, but I'm thinking also too, and as personally, I think not necessarily praying to God, but thanking him every day for the things that you have and the things that you notice. Like if you walk down the street or walk in the woods and you see the beauty of the nature, you take the time to acknowledge that to God, thank him for all the wonderful things that he's made. So it's not, for me, it's not necessarily just praying for something or someone all the time. It may just be taking the time out to thank him for his creations and all he's done for you. Man. Amen. Tell, tell your cat to give you a hug for us. <laughs> no, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so that is so beautiful. So true. And, and I want to, you've made me think of something when you said that, Duff. I hope everybody will begin to see something. Your observation, my brother, James was pointing out to us that many people think of prayer as something where it's always asking something from God. Prayer is communion with God. It's fellowship with God. It's as much listening as it is talking. So Jesus would spend time in prayer and then he would know what the father wanted him to do. Does that make sense to everybody? So prayer mm -hmm. is not just me talking to God, asking him for something all day. It, it's like James said, it's me expressing my gratitude to him, but it's also me listening to him and me having fellowship with him. So I'm constantly in a conversation with God throughout the day because he's your greatest love, right? Cool. All right, so that, that's why we would pray without ceasing. All right, now guys, if y'all don't mind, and this is, I know this is, might feel irritating, but it's important. Let's do it together. 
we surrender right <laughs> to his Holy Spirit every day. Yeah. Every day we love God with all our yeah. heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Every single day we pray Please. with God, right? And then every single day we build on God's oh. word. Keep your hands out there. Why is it important to build on God's word? Why is that important? Because if you don't, you're building on the sand. If you and I aren't in his word, and let me ask you this. How do we train somebody to obey everything he's commanded if we're not in his word where what he said is written, what he commanded? You know what I'm saying? And so we we need to be in his word to even know what he commands, right? And so, so I'm just going to keep going through this if y'all don't mind. Then we're going to train to obey because if I listen to it but I don't obey it, it's it's worthless. He said, I'm deceiving myself. So I need to train to obey what he says because that's his love language. That's how I show him my love for him. And that's where it really matters. If I don't obey it, might as well not hear it. We focus on the mission because it's the mission we've been given. And if we don't, we'll get focused on all kinds of other stuff. We share the vision because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And so few people are out there in the harvest. We've got to share that vision with people. We go out among the lost because that's what he said to do is to go out. But we need to have our minds set on those who don't yet know him and not just be surrounded by our little Christian circles or staying on our couch. You know, we need to be out there caring every single day. Right. And we're going to show God's love in our actions. Why? Because if we don't show love in actions, our words don't mean anything. Right. And we're going to share God's love with words. Because if I show actions, but I never tell them where it comes from and I never share the love of Jesus with somebody, well, then they're not going to know who he is. I, I need to be able to share his love in words. Agreed? And then we're going to invite people to discover. Why? Because they need to know what he commands for themselves. They need to know the gospel for themselves. They need to know the truth for themselves. And so when they say yes, what are we going to do? We're going to disciple them in a love relationship with God. Because that's what they were made for and with others, right? <laughs> so I'm going to, when they say yes, I'm going to disciple them in a love relationship with God and with others. And then you know what God's going to do? God's going to build new little church communities and they're going to go out and repeat the process. But the whole time we're going to do what? We're going to stay connected with those who make us strong. Everybody cool on that? Awesome. All right. Now with that foundation that we've got, We've got 15 minutes to catch some of you guys up who were in this process with us. Um, you, We were introduced, and I want you guys who have been on to catch them up. We asked the question, if I'm going out among the lost, where in the world do I find my lost? Where do I find the lost that I'm supposed to go to? If I'm not traveling to some distant country, where do I find the lost? Who can tell me? In our France. Fantastic. And what does France remind us of? France is, um, we go out and uh, France um, is an acronym for friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, co-workers, and everybody. <laughs> Way to go, Deb. Somebody give Deb a gold star. Are you in <laughs> the house with Deb, Bonnie? Yeah. You need to go get her something like a cookie or something and give it to her. <laughs> okay. We'll do. We don't need no cookie. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give her a piece of fruit. Give her a give her an apple. Um, okay, anyway, that was beautiful. So, um, can I add something to that? Yes. Sometimes please. I think we need to remember that um, if we're not physically going out, um, we have to the technology now that when we reach out to others, we have our our phones. You know that we can call people too. Thank you. Amen. So much thank you so much that is a powerful powerful statement thank you all right so our france is where we reminded of those people now when it comes to your france i want to do a little bit of teaching on that tonight that we learned in our major coaching this week which was so cool all right i want you to think about the fact that in the france we still need to go into that France. And, and, and let me give you the example of what I'm talking about is that so often that we're thinking like, okay, I've invited people to a prayer call or a, or a discipleship call, or I've invited them to church, or I've invited them to a discovery Bible study with me. I've invited them to come to me, but Jesus is saying, go to them. And so when it comes to 
your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances. And when we talk about acquaintances, we talk about also about associates and people in your affinity groups, like, like people who play pickleball, if you play pickleball or golf, if you golf or hunt, if you hunt, people who do the kind of things that you do. But when you're going, if you go to where they are, and you begin to minister to them there, and you show God's love in actions there, and you share God's love in words there, then you ultimately get the chance to invite them to discover. Does that make sense to everybody? So you got to go where they are first. And as Bonnie is pointing out, sometimes that is going via text or, or email, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, or a phone call. You know, there are lots of ways that you can go, but you're saying, I want to go to them where they are. And those people, I'm going to show my his love and share his love there. Everybody got that? Now, what we found is that um, a, a group of us that we are in relationship with who are disciple makers um, out of the Washington, D.C. area, they're called the D.C. Underground. But the D.C. Underground, um, that group of people um, were just being trained by somebody who has found enormous fruit by them leaving what they traditionally thought of as the places that they would make disciples. And they are making disciples in places like at pickleball courts, or they're making disciples in places like <laughs> on hunting preserves, or they're going, they're going places and they're developing these relationships with people in those places. And they're beginning the disciple making process there. And then they're inviting people to discover. So think about going into your France. Everybody agree? I can go into my friends, my friends, my relatives, my associates or acquaintances or affinity groups, right? My neighbors, my coworkers or my classmates, everyone God sends me to. Now, how do we, though, what do we do once we got those people in mind? Who knows what we do to move them from becoming just a person in our friends to a person we have relationship with? There's another acronym. That's my favorite. That's PALS. Yeah. PALS. Talk about it, sister. Tell us what PALS is. Yeah, that's uh, you pray. You uh, it's for you pray over someone or over God for an opportunity or no over someone specific. I used to, and then you ask questions to show you care. Right. Yeah. And you listen. Yeah. And then uh, you share. That's it. Yeah, and that was like. My modus operandi is that, I don't know. I know I said that wrong. When I was working at school, I was like, I was, <laughs> I was always like, and I, and it, I mean, I just ended up, it was cool because you'd end up with little C groups after school or talking yeah. about having a lot of spiritual conversations with people and praying with people. And it's, um it's powerful and it's organic. It's not artificial. It's got, it's got to be natural. Awesome. You know. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Um, all right. So Debbie, when she gives you the apple, you need to turn around and give it back to her. All right. So I she, will. And I believe Heather's got a statement. Go, Heather. I'm sorry. I know you're, you're trying to teach and stuff, but I have to tell you, this is, um, so the prayer calendar I've been writing in and I wrote down, um, my friend Sheila. Um, and I also wrote down another friend on another day, um, Shannon, and um, I got an opportunity over the weekend to spend the night with her. And she has a little horse barn and we just had a really great night and we just sat there and talked and talked and talked. But y'all, she said something to me. She goes, Heather, she goes, can't you just be like, can we talk something out? And she goes, you're preaching to me. And I went, I go, I am so, 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 so sorry. I've never, ever wanted, I go, I'm just so excited to tell you what God is doing in my life. And um, this is the one I've been praying about and wanting to like to try to set up stuff. Like and she goes, it's okay. She goes, it's just like every time I talk, it's always this. And I'm like, I get it. I go, I'm so sorry. Um, but so I, I sort of got a shot down and, yeah. um, and I went, ho, 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 ho. And I went home and um, I just sort of, whatever, I just, you know, prayed on my God. I'm just, I, did, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. I, you know, and I didn't, it wasn't, it was so natural y'all. It wasn't even like I was even trying. It just sort of, I'm excited. Yeah. I, um, so, but my girlfriend, Shannon, which I put on the per on my thing, we were walking down the street, a Tamara and I to my house. And she goes, Hey, 
She goes, you know what? I, I was just sort of wondering, I remember you sort of inviting me to this, whatever. Can we set up a day? And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. And I'm just like, God, oh my goodness. But the beautiful thing of it, not even a day later, she texts me, my friend Sheila, I am so, so sorry for shooting you down. We were just trying to share the love of God and I'm just in a place right now and I'm so sorry and I will never. So I said, girl, and you know, I could have gotten mad at her and said, listen, you know what? This is something about me, but I didn't. I took a step back and you know what I mean? I just sort of let her be where she is, loved her where she is and she came back. So I'm not gonna force it. I'm just gonna be there. And now I have two people but God answered not even a week, y'all, after I prayed, put it on that calendar. I'm sorry. I'm just very passionate about this and totally believe it. So I'm sorry. Way to go. That is awesome. Thank you, Heather. And Tamara, I want you to give Heather a cookie or something. <laughs> right? That's awesome, y'all. And you know that what? I have a feeling that girl Sheila is going to be amazing. Hey. I, all I know is, is Sheila, Sheila right now is a lost sinner. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so um, I, I, all joking aside, Heather, that, that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And can I share an encouragement with you, Heather, and everybody on the, on the call has helped this happen, I'm sure. But I remember the person who shut me down the hardest and coldest I've ever been shut down was my wife's sister. When one of our children was being born and I ended up spending some time with her and she shut me down. I mean, she wasn't as kind as, as your friend. She was, she was just nasty the way she shut me down. Today, she is a dedicated um, Christ follower. Well, let me say a dedicated churchgoer who knows Jesus and is on her way to becoming a, a full-fledged follower of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And it's like those shutdowns are not a sign that you're doing the wrong thing, you know, um, all the time. Sometimes you're doing the right thing, uh, even when somebody does that. Thank you. But I think that the point is that, um, that Bonnie was making and Heather was kind of affirming is if you start with praying for them, asking them questions because you care, listening to understand them then when you share they're a lot more open to it because they know you care and you know what you're sharing into everybody agree so pals is a tremendous acronym to use oh look at there hey don's got some cookies to pass out we have to come by don's house don said i'm going to reward myself nobody would reward me so i'm rewarding myself there you go i love it buddy all right so so pals, pray, ask, listen, share. Now, this group of people that we're praying for, asking, listening, and sharing, that group of people goes on your what? Who wants to tell us what it goes on? That awesome calendar that... Um, yes, look at there. Thank you. James held one up. Way to go, buddy. All right, so the prayer calendar is a very simple and beautiful thing. Let me ask y'all, who besides me has a hard time staying consistent with doing something like that? Is there anybody besides me that has a hard time with staying consistent? It's like I have to keep coming back and being reminded. All of a sudden, I'm looking at I'm like two days out, and I hadn't even looked at my prayer calendar. You know what I'm saying? And so, but what's beautiful about it is the accountability to look at it today when I'm faced with the 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 accountability that there is with us to say, okay, your prayer calendar and, and your sharing time, I'm wanting to share. Y'all remember that we were supposed to be uh, taking um, somebody through a busy life challenge. You know, we're supposed to invite them to that. Well, there's a guy that's been on my prayer calendar forever. And so I've been praying, asking and listening forever with him. And the sharing time had not yet come. And so I see him out on the lake in a kayak so I get on a paddleboard and paddle up beside him and I got the next hour with him just asking him questions listening doing a discovery bible study like that simple thing that we all learned to do where you're just asking questions what are your praises what are your challenges you know let's 
I shared the word and I said, what do you think it's telling you about God? What do you think it's telling you about people? That process of going through that, because this guy has been my pal for, for a long, long time, and he knows I care about what's going on in his family and his children and his grandchildren, because that foundation was there, when I just started asking him questions, it was just natural for him to answer what he was thankful for and what he was. And when I shared a passage of scripture, he was ready to share what he thought about that scripture. So that invitation to discover becomes a very easy and natural thing when you've been doing what Bonnie taught us, which is pray, ask, listen, share. When it comes to the prayer calendar, the intentionality of that prayer calendar is crucial. And Bonnie pointed out that using text messages or other things is a great means that we have today. My prayer calendar, my first hit for people on my prayer calendar every time is a text. But we're going to introduce you to a next level of, of that. So I'm reaching out to people on the prayer calendar saying, I was thinking about you, just thanking God for you, love you, care about you. Um, ask, hey, is there some something that I could be, you know, asking God to to bless you with or do to do in your life whatever so i'm going to text them a little something and just wait and hear back sometimes they're sharing something going on in their life that gives me an opportunity to show god's love in actions it's all kinds of opportunities but sometimes the first thing god does when i read their name is give me something to do instead of sending that text like there's a guy that's on my list for tomorrow and there's a piece of trash in his yard and he's in a wheelchair and there's a piece of trash that I really already know. I'm going to go down there and pick up the trash out of his yard for him, stop by and, and visit with him. I'm going to show God's love in actions. But you need to start asking God on that prayer calendar when you see those people, what is it you want me to do? What step do you want me to take? And then if it's people, especially the believers on your calendar, the ones that are already Christians, because we're asking you to put both Christians and people who are not yet Christians, the idea of using voiced, now I'm talking about there's when you're texting on your phone, if you're on iPhone, you can click a little microphone, not the one that records a text and types it out for you, but you can click a voice text where you're actually sending them your voice. You know what I'm saying? You're sending them a recording. So look for that on your phone because that is a beautiful way to bless people to just call them and say, hey, I was thinking about you today and I just want to pray for you. And you just pray on that voice text and leave it for them. It's a powerful way of blessing brothers and sisters, okay? So that's so a really good one. Now, I've even done that. I did that today. No, I did it yesterday with a person on my prayer calendar who was um, not a believer. And I left them this prayer by voice message. You know what I'm saying? And I just said, hey, I was just praying for you. And I, hey, I, I was just thinking... We just do it right now. So God, I just want to thank you for my neighbor. I want to thank you for how much they mean to me and for what a great neighbor they are and and, and what a blessed blessing we have in having them, uh, you know, as neighbors. And I'm just asking you bless their family with good health and just deeper love for each other. I'm just asking those things that I genuinely want for them. <clears throat> I just say, I'm asking in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, thanks for letting me leave that message with you, you know, and, or, you know, I, I hope you're going to have a great day. And, and leave it those those have we have found through the coaching that we receive from other people that those voice um prayers are very very powerful um means of of sharing god's love all right and in words Is that cool all right everybody got it now we're at 32 after, so we're going to pick up the rest of it after. Um, we'll, we'll give you the rest of it the next time we're together. But here's what we want you to do. Keep doing what you're doing. If you have not yet taken somebody through a challenge, we ask you to take them through the um, uh, Busy Life Challenge. If you have not yet done that, we encourage you to find somebody this week and do it. If you've already done it, we want you to consider reaching out to somebody who's who is in your prayer calendar, somebody that you're trying to reach out to that you feel like you've already been showing your love and sharing love and you've done the pilot, you've done the pray, ask, listen, and now you feel like it might be time to share that you would actually invite them to that place to discover and say, hey, 
would you want to do this with me? Would you want to? So that's after you've already done a good bit of time with somebody and building a foundation. It's that time to be able to, to invite them to discover. If you're at that place already, invite them to discover this week. If not, just practice it with somebody you already know. Practice doing um, what we've been teaching you. If you don't know how to do it, just get on a discipleship call tomorrow morning. Stay on those calls every single day to be encouraged. Learn the pattern and then practice it with somebody so you can be ready. Michelle. Yes. Um, as I was listening to you guys talk about France and pals and how you shared, you know, just how you're doing things, um, just went out for a paddle. Um, Romans 12, 9 through, hmm, uh, 9 through 16 was coming to mind because I had recently read it. Um, and see, here we go, guys. This is a perfect opportunity for me to demonstrate how I love people and I love working with people and talking with people, but I hate large groups. So all of a sudden, my anxiety went way up and I was going to read that passage. But if somebody else would like to, it's I really good it. and very appropriate right now. <laughs> I love it. That is, that is great. Um, love must be sincere, right? Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves is one of the things he, he later says. But he says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. And then he, then he says, um, uh, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And he says, share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality, right? And that's a beautiful gift that we practice that hospitality. Um, then it says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn, right? Um, then he says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Um, is, that, is that where we are? Are we right? Is that right? Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Michelle, what were you think? What was your thinking on that? Uh, I was just, you know, we were talking about love in action, and and that scripture is literally entitled "Love in Action." <laughs> so, um, I was just, I was just thinking about being sincere was the main thing because um, even in these conversations, when you're praying and asking and listening, um, even when you are having to deal with difficult people that um, I applied pals to a very difficult conversation, um, which my end goal was not even necessarily um, to share the, you know, share the Lord with them. It was really just to get through a conversation and yeah. praying and asking and listening, but being sincere about it helped me keep my focus so that I was loving in action, even though it was a difficult conversation. So, yeah. Beautiful, my sister. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Guys, Michelle, you blessed us. Thank you for bringing that word in. That is a beautiful scripture to bring in right here at the perfect time. And thank you for what you shared. That's awesome. Now let's do this. We're going to, we're going to send you out. But before we do, we're going to invite everybody to do the sales one last time. Um, and remembering that every day we surrender to his Holy Spirit, right? We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbor as ourself, right? We pray continually or without ceasing. We build on God's word. We train to obey his word. We focus on the mission and we share the vision. We go out among the lost. We show God's love in actions. We share God's love with words. We invite people to discover. And when they say yes, we disciple them in a love relationship with God and others. And then we watch new small church communities form and go out and repeat the process. And all together, we stay connected with those who make us stronger. <laughs> Amen. 
Love you Amen. all. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Love you. Love y'all. Good night. Good night, y'all. Good night.